Thank you, Madam Chair. I want to make sure that, that it is crystal clear how important our relationship is in the compact uh, that we have with the freely associated states. So, um, Mr. Shriver, you noted in your testimony that uh, the compacts of free association with the freely associated states are critical to U.S. national security and to maintaining a free and open Indo-Pacific. I want to make sure that that is crystal clear. And then for Secretary Dominich, in your, in your testimony, you state that uh, eligible citizens of uh, the freely associated states have the right to enter the United States visa-free. That is a very important uh, uh, fact to note that they can come visa-free and to live, work, and study here for an unlimited amount of time. So FAS citizens are in our country um, legally, they are legally present in our country. So uh, do you, do either one of you, probably um, Secretary Dominic, do you have uh, numbers on how many FS, FAS citizens have come to the United States visa-free? Either um, one of you. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, I... Uh, would answer it in two ways. One is we do an enum Interior pays the Census Bureau to do an enumeration every five years, as, mm -hmm. as you're likely aware. We just completed that enumeration, and um, it, basically the numbers are about 38,000 uh, 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 folks from the freely associated states live in the territories and Hawaii. We don't count uh, we don't enumerate those that are living in Arkansas, other places in the United States. So it's about 38,000. So the 38,000 live mainly in Guam and Hawaii? Is that what you're saying? That, that is correct. It's mainly Guam and Hawaii. And there are uh, some numbers in, in Arkansas, for example. Do you have any idea what the, that number is? And why don't you have that figure? Uh, that's a good question. I guess we're only allowed to spend money um, in that enumeration for the territories and Hawaii, uh, but I'm sure there's probably a number elsewhere that we could try to find. Happy to get that to you afterwards. Yes, and when you say 38,000, because the, the populations of these uh, countries are not that high, it's probably um, it's a, a little over 130,000 maybe, and when you have 38,000 plus, there are more of them living outside of, of their uh, countries, and we're talking about a pretty significant number. Now, at the same time, yes, many of them do live in Hawaii, 17,000 or so, and uh, there are large numbers in Guam. And because of the, the responsibility and the mutual um, relationship that we have with them, don't you think it's important that as we deal with the compact and whatever provisions of the compact that will be subject to any kind of uh, negotiation, that when they do come to our country, that they are able to live, work, and you know, access health care uh, like uh, anyone else who is legally present in our country? Wouldn't that be an important thing for us to pay attention to, both of you? Okay, I want the record to reflect that they're both nodding yes. And the, the main re reason is that um, way back in 1995, 96 or so, when the, the welfare reform law was enacted, um, and there was a definition relating to, there was a definition that, ex I know it was inadvertent exclusion of, of citizens from FA, FAS states that prohibited them from being uh, eligible for Medicaid coverage. And that was, I know that it was inadvertent uh, because that per section that I'm referring to in the welfare reform bill had to do with the services that's available to all those who are legally present in our country. And uh, the citizens of FAS were not included, even though it's very clear that they are legally present in our country. So I'm hopeful that as you proceed with negotiations that there's some way that we can um, pay attention to the, the, uh, that they should not be discriminated against in uh, services that others who are legally present in, the, in our country can access. So I just wanted to put that out there. And then I do have, since I'm running out of time, for um, Secretary Shriver, your testimony knows this, the strategic importance of the, this region. And uh, one threat that I'm concerned about is biosecurity in the region and the Department of Navy 
published the Regional Biosecurity Plan for Micronesia and Hawaii in 2015 that included numerous recommendations to help mitigate the threat of invasive species in the region. Uh, will you provide me with an update on where the DOD is currently uh, in with implementing those recommendations that have to do with protecting biosecurity? Uh, if you'll permit me, I'd like to take that question and, and respond to you uh, more fulsome answer with consulting my uh, colleagues in the Navy. And you also note that uh, the, there is a concern in the region about climate change, uh, and that, that climate change is, quote, quote yeah, a source of concern to our partners in the Pacific Islands. And um, is climate change a source of concern for the DOD? And if so, what steps will the DOD take to mitigate the impacts of climate change in the Indo-Pacific region? There's no question that island states uh, are seeing the impact of uh, global warming and climate change already. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair.